everyone what's up welcome back to another video in today's vlog we're actually headed to Osaka we are currently at the Tokyo station right here we're taking the bullet train to Osaka it's a two and a half hour train ride kind of rushing so we're not late for the train we board at 6 30 currently 5 45 so let's go beautiful building though Tokyo station we're a little hungry so hopefully there's food in there we got mom Jesse my sister Liza are you ready for Osaka <laughs> Beautiful station. Look at this, guys. That's awesome. Ice cream for breakfast. Coffee. You want ice cream? What's up, Grayson? What's up, dude? What's up? All right, we made it to our destination on the train station. But this is not our train. There's one more after this and then our train. So we're departing in 30 minutes. So just gonna kind of walk around, see if they have anything here. Everything looks closed, but they do have some vending machines with coffee, so I might do that. Yeah, everything there looks closed. So let's go get some coffee, guys. Last night, I actually knocked out, woke up at 11, and then I've been up ever since. So only got about three, four hours of sleep. So hopefully uh, this coffee will help wake me up. See, I think I'm gonna do an ice blend coffee with sugar and cream. Dude. All right, it's showing you the process of making the coffee. Can you guys see that? Coming out? Oh, yeah, it's a pop that Really? Yeah. Arigato! Coffee taste test, let's go. Pretty good. Alright guys, here's our train. Let's go in. Alright, it's actually pretty spacious. Feels nice in here. Nice and cool. Try to get some work done. Edit a vlog, possibly. Boys, you know where we're going? Um, the next hotel. What city? In um, Osaka. Yeah, good Osaka Santa Claus City. Boom. All right, we are situated, feeling really spacious. We got an armrest right here, pretty big, huge tray. And I wish airplanes were like this. Look how much room we have. Also got my fan here. This has been clutch. Oh, let's go. Cool. We just get this down for piece, breakfast. Yeah? That's crazy. <laughs> Whoa, okay, the boys got chicken katsu or pork katsu. Okay, you guys, here's a famous YouTuber. Is that Wagyu? What's up, dude? Yeah. What's your score? 9.5. Wow. Osaka. I got the good ones.
came back here and uh, we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna show you guys around here, okay? Alright, okay, alright, okay, let's get started, let's get a, let's get a taxi, okay. right? Alright guys, we are starting our Osaka tour and our first stop is Osaka Castle. We have a tour guide with us. His name is Taka. Pretty awesome. He uh, went to school in New York City for a couple years, but then COVID happened so he had to come back to Japan. Wow. That is stunning. My camera is also so, so hot. It's kind of crazy. Uh, my mom's a trooper though, and uh, my sister-in-law Jen's mom's a trooper for coming up here. Quite a, a little trek, plus this heat. Whew. All right guys, we actually just finished Osaka Castle, but dropped the moms back off at the hotel because it's too hot for them, so now we're just gonna go out. Continue our tour. Let's go. So the last few clips, I actually just broke out my iPhone because, I don't know, I kind of want to use my iPhone more often because it's so hot. Holding this and lugging it around is kind of annoying to be honest with you and I'm curious to see if it was good, so. We've got a matcha latte, it's delicious. Mmm. First matcha latte of Japan. So good. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, mm. oh my god. Really good, but so hot. <laughs> but the flavor is really good. And put it close to your mouth. There you go. Creation and Matt, they pass this or they pass this? So hot. Now, let me try one now and have a go. Get them. What do you think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's the down. Just weird. Yeah. I'm quick. <laughs> and we are in our hotel room. Gonna relax, chill. Again, Tokyo hotels are typically smaller. We have a little room tour. There's Donnie oh, eating. <laughs> Bed, desk area, and that's it. And then the bathroom with the bidet, which have been really amazing for this trip. So I think we are just gonna go out to dinner tonight. So tomorrow we sort of have a free day because my brother and his family are going to Universal Studios. So we're just gonna kind of like hang out, do a little bit of shopping, go to the aquarium. The aquarium here is supposed to be really good. And yeah, just kind of like a slow day. Really like Osaka so far. It's a lot calmer than Tokyo. And our guide today was really awesome. I don't know the last time we talked, but it is now 6.30 and we're gonna head out to dinner. I think we're gonna kind of go back in the area and find maybe some seafood. But this hotel is pretty nice. I have to say the lobby is nice, but I kind of like our other hotel rooms better. But How you feel, Mark? Rested? Rested. <laughs> All right, we're back in Dantonbury. We got mom here. Say hi, mom. Hi. <laughs> For the vlog. Yeah, this guy is gonna take a lot of that. 
All right, just had dinner. A little bit of an ordeal, but the food was good. Service was uh, pretty terrible, but lively today. All right, that's gonna end the first day in Osaka. We're here one more day and then we're gonna head over to Kyoto. We had a full tour today, but it was 90 degrees and it was just so hard for my mom as well as my sister-in-law's mom to walk that much in 90 degree weather. It was just like really dry heat. And so we kind of cut that short, but that's fine. We all needed some rest anyways. We got to see the Osaka castle, which was amazing. And then we took our parents home and then kind of walked around a little bit more to see some of Osaka as well as some of the shopping scene and then some restaurant areas. So we still had a really good time. The only thing though is we did have dinner at Gyukaku and there's actually two gyukakus in San Diego and the one we go to in Mermesa we love. And here's the thing too with traveling with a large group in Japan, it's really hard to find a restaurant that could seat all of us. And so as we were walking, we were trying to go to all these restaurants, but it was just packed or couldn't see this all. And so I saw gyukaku and I was like, oh my God, let's go. When I went to ask for a table, they were already very rude. So I already knew off bat. I was like, wait, I should have followed my intuition and been like, nah, let's just go somewhere else. But we were hungry and they could accommodate 10 of us. So I was like, okay, let's just go. And the whole time they were just really rude to us. We would order, we did the buffet, we did the highest tier buffet and it ended up being about $40 per person. So our bill was over $400, which is more than we wanted to spend. But at the same time, we couldn't find a place to seat us all. So we're like, let's just stay here. We're here. Let's just have a good time, order some beers and just have a good time. But they were just so rude, which was so weird to me. And I don't know, like we would order meat, they wouldn't bring it. So we ordered a bunch of Wagyu and this harami steak and they ended up bringing us like so many plates of beef tongue and we're like, we didn't even order this. But of course my brother ate it because he felt bad and I was just like, bro, don't eat it. Like we didn't even order that. They, they sent us chicken, we didn't order chicken at all. And it's automated, you use your phone, you just scan the QR code, you send the orders in. We didn't order any chicken, any beef tongue, and that was the majority that came out. And we opted for the highest tier that had Wagyu, and so barely any of that came out. And so I was like, nah, we're gonna just keep ordering. And so by the end of it, we ended up getting the amount of Wagyu we wanted, but it was just weird that they were just like sending us meats we didn't want, they were rude and just very standoffish. I don't know, whatever. Tomorrow though, my brother and his family are heading over to Universal Studios, and um, me, my sister, and Donnie and my mom we're probably just gonna keep it chill, go to the aquarium because the aquarium in Osaka is supposed to be pretty good and it's indoor AC so that should help my mom be able to enjoy it a little bit more. We're also probably gonna try to do some shopping with her because she's been wanting to shop this whole trip and she hasn't had time to shop so hopefully we can get her some shopping time. But again a lot of the stores here are also outdoors so it's just so hard. That's pretty much all we're planning to do tomorrow. I do want to try to go to the fish market if we have time but other than that tomorrow is just gonna be a chill day and I'll take you guys along. And then from there the next day we're, we're gonna go to Kyoto for two nights and then back to Tokyo for another three, four days, I think, something like that. Yeah, so far I love Osaka. Really excited for Kyoto though. I hear really good things about it. I hear it's like very beautiful and more traditional, which would be a nice change of pace. All right, right now I'm just gonna go to sleep, try to get a good night's rest, and I will see you in the morning. Good morning, day two Osaka. We're actually headed to breakfast, but first a little under eye mask because your boy hasn't getting much sleep. Yesterday was probably the first time I got more than four hours of sleep. So feeling energized today and feeling good, but just need a little help with hydration. <laughs> um, and then after breakfast, we're gonna come up here, pack our bags because we need to do another bag transport over to Kyoto. It's gonna be a nice chill day and uh, we'll see where it takes us. So yeah, let's go grab breakfast. We actually have a couple vouchers for today and tomorrow. Also this hotel, I really like it. The location is amazing, but honestly the location is perfect. So I really highly, so I really highly recommend, I know I can't talk right now. Don's like, what the fuck? <laughs> because my mouth is dry, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. But this location is perfect and I really highly recommend this if you're in Osaka and wanna be kind of close to all the action, the shopping, the nightlife, but also be sort of in the bougie area as well. And it's not that expensive either, so. All right, let's finish up getting ready and let's go grab some breakfast. <laughs> I can't talk this morning. All right, we're on our way to breakfast, but I wanted to show you the lobby real quick. See, it's really nice here. Location is central. 
Only thing though, so, the rooms are a little bit outdated, but totally fine in my opinion. All right, let's check out breakfast. I need to, uh, that's really pretty good. Look at that. They got some fruits, some pastries. Konnichiwa. What do they got in here? Corn soup, some pasta, veggies, dim sum. Ooh, they even got some dim sum it's in here. Bacon and sausage. Ooh, she looks like she needs a little bit more time. Scrambled eggs, potato eggs, and they got miso soup, takoyaki, more pasta, veggies. Wow, I'm impressed. Very, very nice. All right, here's my little spread. It got some scrambled egg soft boiled egg this is called tater tots some japanese plum spinach shumai piece of cheese some pickled radish also have some coffee here got done at the fish market now we're on our way to the aquarium Osaka aquarium I got this little uh, noodle bowl thing in one of those what do you call those Don or no like the little vending machine thingies figured uh, we could use it for <laughs> an ornament also picked up these cute O1 one bowls chopstick and spoon set I don't know I just really like the color we're here at the area where the aquarium is. There's this huge Ferris wheel. I think that's like the biggest one I've seen. They have a Legoland right there. And then I think we're going to take the escalator over to the aquarium, which I think is that building all the way over there. Oh my God, y'all. It is fucking hot. Oh, I think it's 92 degrees today. Super dry. Do not come to Japan in July. Just don't do it. Save yourself some heartache. <laughs> all right, there's the aquarium right there. Just like that, we're back in the hotel. Got a little quick lunch right now. We got some 7-Eleven um, food. We're venturing outside of our <laughs> egg salad sandwich. So I just got a beef bowl here. Let's do a taste test together. The aquarium was cool. I like how they uh, sort of positioned it. You kind of spiral down the aquarium. So there's a lot of room. Even though it was busy, you got a good view of everything. If you just waited patiently, the whale sharks were pretty cool. I always have like a love-hate relationship with things like that because, you know, you kind of feel bad. <laughs> At least the fish had a really good life, I guess. But let's try this. Mmm. Bomb. Mmm. How much was this? This was 500 yen. That's really cheap. So this was 500 yen, which is about $3. So, so affordable here. Mmm. This would be like $12 to $15 at like Yoshinoya in the States. Let's try. Mm -hmm. And then Donnie got chicken karage. Pretty much the same, 500. Bon appetit. 
So Donnie was watching. Oh, sorry. Donnie was watching a 7 Eleven documentary. Was it on YouTube? Or something? Basically, Japanese company owns 7 Eleven. And here they're thriving because everyone's walking around, pop in and out. It's so efficient. Even if it's busy, you're in and out like quickly. Like the line goes by so quick. But the thing in the States is a lot of the 7 Elevens there were profitable because they were selling a lot of cigarettes, a lot of gas. But now that people are a little bit more conscious about smoking or EVs are around or cars are better in gas mileage, that sort of a return on investment is getting lower because now people are buying less gas and not buying as many cigarettes. So they're trying to figure out a way to still be profitable in the States. And it's not like here where the food is their money maker because any time you go into 7-Eleven here, there's people just going in and out. But in the States, it's not like you're gonna go drive to 7-Eleven for a little beef ball. <laughs> or maybe we would, who knows? If it's this good, I would. Okay, I think we're just gonna wrap up here, rest a little bit, and then finally go shopping. My mom has been waiting to shop. She is on the hunt for like secondhand Louis or maybe just getting Louis at the Louis store. There's actually a big Louis Vuitton store here. It looks massive. And there's a bunch of like secondhand shops I wanna go to as well. I was trying to save, sorry. I was trying to save all of my vintage thrift shopping till Tokyo at the end, but at the same time, they say it is cheaper in Osaka. So I'm just gonna check, see what they have. We're also gonna buy a carry-on because one, our luggage is already like 40, 45 pounds and the weight limit on United is 50. If you go over, it's like $200 charge. So we're gonna buy a carry-on each. <laughs> that way we get a shop a little bit. We're thinking of getting Remo M Remova. We're thinking of getting a couple of Removas just because we need a really good carry-on anyways. And then I'm also thinking too, like, I think I want to put my gear into that, into a carry-on that rolls because wearing that heavy backpack, going through airports, traveling to other cities and other destinations, it starts to wear on my back. So that might be a, a smart thing to do. But yeah, we're going to wrap up and then let's go shopping. Look at this Louis store. It's crazy. Mom's looking for a birthday gift to herself. It's like a couple, a block that way. Oh, an expensive oh, That's adorable. Ooh, I want it. I like it. Give a phone number, please. So cool. Mom just scored a bag. It's super cute. It's her from me to me 80th birthday gift and she ended up saving $900 based off the US price on the US website. So not only was it much cheaper in Japan, but you're also saving from taxes because it's duty free. So she saved $900, that's crazy. All right, so now we're on our way to Remova because we want to get a couple carry-ons and hopefully we can also save some money buying it in Japan because we are in desperate need of carry-ons. So let's go, let's see what they have. This is yeah, there's classic and Oh, original. sorry, sorry. I think I like this one. This one's cute. Oh my god. What do we do? What happened? <laughs> his and his. Well, you know what they say <laughs> when in Japan. Delirious. We're both delirious. We've been nonstop for a whole week. Having fun, but nonstop. We actually ordered room service right now because we're just too tired. And we got, I think, a club sandwich and french fries and deep fried prawns. <laughs> so we'll have a little mini mukbang before we go to bed. Okay, here's what we got. I love how they thought there's like more than two people here. But we've got our club sandwich right here. Let's open this up. All right, that's looking pretty good. Okay, and then we got some deep fried prawns. Mmm, that's it. <laughs> All right, the hotel room's pretty small, so I'm just gonna eat my share and then uh, Donnie will eat after me, but just wanna get in a few bites with you guys. Have a little chat too about how it's been going in Japan in general. Here's how that looks. Yum. Ooh. So 
So first off, just love how everything in Japan is just so much more cheap than the U.S. Like, it's so crazy. We'll like go into 7-Eleven, grab like six drinks, and it's like $3.50 for all of that. And also for like, you know, shopping in general too, duty-free, you're saving a lot. My mom just bought herself a Louis bag. And in the States, it would have been $900 more. We just bought our Remova carry-ons. I ended up saving about, I want to say 280. Donnie saved about 300. So if you want to go shopping, go shopping in Japan. But I do remember when we went to Singapore a few years back, we also bought um, a couple luxury wallets there. And I remember saving like $500. So overall, I would say like, you can get by by not spending a lot if you go to Japan. If you're really smart about where you're shopping, where you're eating. For us, a lot of our breakfasts have been 7-Eleven, which is like two bucks for breakfast, you know? We're just hungry, so we decided to get room service. And this was a little bit more on the pricey side because hotel, room service. And that piece of prawns right here. This was $20. Another thing we noticed too about Japan is that they just follow the rules here. You're supposed to stay on the right side of the escalator. That's what they do. You know, like no one is jaywalking. And you know, obviously too, there are still parts in Japan like Shinjuku where we were in Tokyo that was a little bit more westernized, which is kind of sad to say. Oh, let's try a bite of this prawn. Whoa. Mmm. Another thing I've noticed too is everything is so efficient here. They just kind of are thoughtful about everything. Like we went to the aquarium today and we're like, oh my god, the line is so long in America. That line would have been terrible. Yeah, but here it just kind of went pretty quickly and smoothly. Oh, Japan is a very, very walkable country, or at least cities so far in Tokyo and Osaka. To get anywhere, you really just have to walk a lot, whether that's taking a subway to get from A to B, you're gonna do a lot of walking, or you can take taxis and Ubers, which add up. But because we have our, you know, my mom here, my sister-in-law's mom here, we're obviously taking a lot of um, taxis and Ubers to, so that they're not spending their energy getting from point A to B and then they're exhausted to, to you know, explore. So we've been spending a lot of money on that. But if you're young, capable to walk, definitely do that because it is fun kind of just to explore. So yeah, we've been having a great time. But I will say that the one thing we were just talking right now that we definitely want to do more of or eat more of is sushi. That's probably the best meal we've had. Tomorrow we have another half day here in Osaka and then we're gonna head over to Kyoto and then back to Tokyo for another four days. So still quite a long time here. <laughs> but yeah, um, I will see you guys in the morning tomorrow. I don't know what we're doing. I think we just have a free day to wander around. So yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Good night. Bye. Good morning from Osaka. This is day two, three. I don't know at this point, but we're getting the day started early. We're going to go grab breakfast with the family. But before that, I don't know what we're going to do because honestly, everything in Japan seems to open around like 11, 10, 11. All of the stores around us open at 11 o'clock. So it's currently 6.30. So yeah, I guess we just kind of hang out until things open. So breakfast maybe venture out a little for shopping. And then I do want to go to Second Street. That's one of like their more well-known secondhand shops here. I'm looking for some vintage clothing, kind of want to thrift today. And then we're going to head over to Nara where the uh, the deer bow at you. <laughs> and then from there, we're going to go to Kyoto. So kind of a long day today, but a little bit kind of not. Like, yeah, I don't know. But we'll be in Kyoto by tonight. So yeah, let's just, let's just go on with the vlog. Let's go. I don't know what I'm saying right now, so let's just go. All right, guys, we have some time alone. We just wrapped up lunch. Donnie is actually on the hunt for some anime and toys. I'm wanting fashion, so we're gonna hit up Second Street, see what they have, and just kind of uh, go from there. So let's go check out some vintage stores. Ooh la la. Oh my God, okay, I'm ready. What they got here, guys? Let's check some stuff out. So here's an example price. 119 for that. 89. Not bad. <laughs> this 
gasoline bag, $49,900. All right, that first second street was a success. I got something I'll show you guys later though. Probably do a haul like when I get back. There's another second street, maybe just like 600 feet away. So we're gonna go to that one and yeah, I think I'm just going to show you guys everything I bought in a separate video after the Japan vlogs. Just so you know, content, you know? Oh, this one looks cool. What is this? There's just so many stores, so... So many people. Alright, let's go. Thank you. 